No, a lot of the times I have fuck it moments in interviews. Like when someone asks me some shit and I have to be like, pretend to be politically correct. And I'm like, oh God, I feel like I'm making everyone uncomfortable. Cause I'm the type of person that when I'm like politically correct and like hyper polite and shit, I make everyone feel really weird. Like, cause I'm really awkward when I'm like that. So it's like all the time, whenever somebody asks me something and I uh, like whatever, and I try to sugarcoat it and I'm like, fuck it. Here's the honest answer. Story of my life, fuck it moments. Fuck it moment was when I moved to Los Angeles without shit in my pocket. Fuck it. Not was like, well, what if, you know, you don't know anyone out there. What if you get, you know, hurt? What if you get kidnapped? What if you get, I don't know, that I'm kidnapped. I remember being on the plane. I remember my aunt driving me to the airport and us having a conversation in the car. And this was kind of when she was like, you know what? You just gotta do what you wanna do, do it then. Kind of gave up on, not gave up, but just, I'm giving up. You won't listen, go do it, go try for it. Go try for yourself. Watch and see. That was kind of like the conversation. And it was quiet in the car. I was 19 years old at the time. And it was quiet in the car. And I remember being nervous kind of. Cause it was like, are you really gonna get out this car now and walk away? So I'm like, it was like, are you really gonna do this now? And I got out the car and I got on the plane and I woke up I fell asleep on the plane and I woke up about an hour into Los Angeles, like coming into Los Angeles. And I looked out and it was all desert, all desert. I'd never seen anything like it. I've never, I'd never really been to LA. I was in LA like one time before, but for like a week. But now that I was moving there, I had all my stuff, like I looked at it and it was all desert. And I was like, fuck man. Well, you just did it. You better work it out. Like you're on your own. But I felt so liberated. I was broke. I didn't really know that many people. I moved out on a whim to go do what I loved. <laughs> like, my whole family was like, nah. I was like, yeah, it is what it is, guys. Like, you know what I mean? And I just remembered thinking back on like all the times that people told me that that feeling would feel bad that that feeling would feel lonely and that that feeling would feel scary and frightening. That shit felt fucking liberating. Like, oh shit, I don't have to listen to people. This is crazy. This is crazy. I, I actually, and just to add that, like add to that thought, that like concept, that idea had been a reoccurring theme in my life for a while. I remember I used to complain about school and one of my favorite teachers, one of my favorite creating, creative writing teachers, one day just kept it so real with me. And I was complaining, I was saying, man, this shit is fucked up. Like, you know, like everyone's trying to tell you how to be here. Like people are trying to take your creativity, take your ideas, like, or not even take your ideas, limit your ideas. They're telling you, you could be creative. You could be, you could be intelligent, but only in the compounds of this, only in, the, only in this bubble. If, as soon as you exceed this bubble, as soon as you ask something that people don't usually ask, or you ask something that's not in a book or whatever, you get a bad grade, you know? And I, and I was complaining to my teacher about it. My teacher finally just looked at me. I've been complaining for weeks. And he finally just looked at me. He was like, then drop out. I said, what? And he didn't drop out. That was the realest shit ever. And I was like, drop out? I can't drop out because if I drop out, then I'm not gonna get a job. And if I don't get a job, then I'm not gonna get money. He's like, you're saying that you don't care about all this. So if you really don't care, why can't you drop out? And I'm not saying people should drop out, because I didn't, I finished. I completed school and I graduated. But why can't you do what you want to do? Why not? So yeah, I was really, really bad at school my entire life and partially because I didn't really apply myself. Also because I didn't really give a fuck. I didn't really give a fuck about school to be completely honest and genuine and transparent. That's not me saying that anybody else should not give a fuck about school. Me and my personal life, I cared about music. You know what I mean? And I was really dedicated and engulfed in making music my entire life. And I wasn't successful academically. I just felt like I was in jail. Like, I actually wish that somebody would have interviewed me at like 17 so I can really, I could really talk about it in depth, you know? Cause I was so passionate about how much I fucking hated school. Because I'm not the type of person that's like used to conforming and like used to conforming. Fuck that. I'm not the type of person that like likes to work within like a certain structure, be labeled or just, 
I like to be free. Throughout my youth, I hadn't really, my parents didn't feel like I had displayed any, any, um, any forms of discipline. They felt like I hadn't displayed the ability to do something that I didn't want to do. I was also very defiant. I'm the type of person who doesn't listen without asking questions. And sometimes when you're a teenager and when you're young, you kind of unlearn that because people make you feel like you have to hesitate and doubt and question everything that you say in the future and et cetera. People do that to kids. I just, I didn't understand that, that concept, that, that thought process, that logic. How can, how can somebody tell me what to do with my life and tell me who to be and expect me not to challenge it? It didn't make sense. My parents wanted me to go to college. I think partially because I, they were fearful for my future. Everyone knew that once I graduated, I was either going to sink or swim. So my father is a professional musician. He's a guitar player. He, he was just worried about me in general because I didn't display any kinds of, like things that parents would consider disciplined. I wasn't displaying that. And my aunt and uncle were, um, they are dermatologists and orthopedics. They're both doctors. Everyone wanted me to go to college because they felt as though I was some troubled teen who like didn't understand the harsh, harsh realities of life and who wasn't gonna listen or survive in the real world. But I knew that didn't make sense because I was never good at school. Like my entire life, I was never good at school, you know? And it wouldn't have made sense for me to graduate and go to college and suck and waste everyone's money doing something that I love second best. If I already have a passion, I know what I love. I know what makes me happy. I know this for a fact. Like, you know, and people try to tell you when you're younger, you don't know. You don't know what makes you happy. You don't really know. But I knew. It wouldn't know what, like, I just knew, you know? So I said, fuck it. And I packed my shit and I went to Los Angeles. Because I'd been kind of involved in the music industry and the DMV just on my own. I would skip class, but I would be in the studio. You know what I mean? Go to the studio. I would skip class to go make music. Like, it's literally my life. I've been doing it my entire life. Yeah, I remembered being a complete kid and everyone in the adult world kind of checking me because I was a kid in a weird way. So, like, I remember being 19 and being just a kid, but now I was suffering the consequences of some of the childish decisions I was making. I no longer was protected by my parents which isn't a bad thing. This wasn't a bad thing. I just, life checks you, kind of. And if you're smart enough and intelligent enough and attentive, attentive enough and you have the desire to be better, you're gonna allow it to check you and be like, damn, I should have done that, whatever. Then I remember turning into more of an adult. I'm still a kid though, right? But I remember turning into more of an adult just mentally. And I remember feeling an extreme loneliness. Very, very, very lonely because I was working so hard. And I, was, I, and I was sacrificing everything. I was sacrificing my, I felt like I was, you know, I wasn't going out to party like I used to. I'm, a, I'm like a city kid, you know? I used to kick it on the side of the street and go wherever, wherever the fuck I wanted, wherever the fuck I wanted, you know? All of a sudden, I'd given everything up. You know, my friends, I didn't get to go home as much at all, really. I wasn't seeing any really big checks come in in the first couple of months, you know, year, first year. And I just remembered feeling alone. But that also, that too was, it was almost like I, I wasn't foreign to that feeling, feeling kind of boxed in and like whatever, because I'd felt that in school. So I knew that that, that, that is temporary. That if you dedicate and you focus, your, you, you focus on something enough and you put enough passion and heart into it, you might suffer for a couple of months, you might suffer for years, but the way life works, just the way it works is one day you're gonna reap the benefits. If you're around long enough to be here and the benefit, the, the benefit of it is gonna be worth it all. I think, regret, the, 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 I think regret is a very negative emotion. And I think that it's easy to fall into negativity. So when we think back on our lives, it's easy for us to say, oh, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. It takes like practice and um, repetition and discipline almost to think of it the other way. 
to say, all right, I shouldn't have done that. No, never mind. I did that and it happened for a reason and now I'm here. So what can I do now? I think that if you allow yourself to regret the things that have occurred and happened in your life, you break yourself down. You're, you're not able to live and exist to your fullest potential in the present day if you allow yourself to think about why you shouldn't have done something in the past. Like, so no. <laughs>